So always keep the outcomes in mind for the IT people. So in this video, we're going to see why they should, and what's the focus of the IT team should be, and why this focus of keeping the outcomes in mind. What does it mean in the real world, and what does it mean in the real real world? And you'll see why I'm saying this. And I'll give you a fair example at the end, so that won't be a long video. Uh, stay tuned, and uh, let's do it. I'm Steve Johnston, a serial entrepreneur, and I'm passionate about helping entrepreneurs to succeed. And I'm very excited to use this channel to share all my valuable resources with you to help you reach your goal. Come and join me. Let's work together and we'll get your digital transformation to success. I decided to start this video with the, this book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People from Stephen Covey. I read that book a long time ago, and I can relate this book with the uh, title of this video, which is Keeping the Outcomes in Mind, with the habit number two, start with the end in mind. And even like many times during one week, I'm thinking about, I need to speak or think about the end first to know exactly. So if you know where you want to go and you know where you are, obviously you can fill the gaps and know exactly what to do. So what he says in the book is, uh, know what you want to achieve, so outcomes and results, create your plan, divide your plan in smaller projects, execute these projects in the right sequence, depending on your budget and resources, and evaluate along the way and make adjustments. If you watched other videos about how to create your plan, your IT roadmap, this is exactly the same approach. We know where we, what we want to achieve, and this is how we will understand, know, discover what to do to get there. So what does that mean exactly? So the short answer is, if the IT people keeps the outcome in mind, it means that the outcome is the real results at the end. It means that the IT projects will be fully aligned with the objectives of the senior management team and the business, obviously. So IT should focus on the business goals. Okay. It sounds theoretical at this point. Fine, I'm with you. So now, what is the meaning of this in the real world? Again, the short answer is the IT team should not focus on the IT metrics that they like, but they should focus on the business metrics of their IT projects. This is a subtle difference, but if you think about it, I'm going to give you a few examples in a few minutes, but IT metrics is for IT people to say, okay, I've done this, I've done that. In terms of business metrics, it, what is the real outcome? This is why keeping the outcome in mind is keeping the business objectives in mind in all IT projects. So what does that mean in the real, real world? So basically, I'm going to give you a few examples of the IT metrics and approach versus the business metrics and approach and results and outcome. So in case of IT, they can say, oh, I need to have a certain uptime. Okay, that's an IT metric. This is a number about, okay, I'm going to be 99.5% uptime. If I'm lower than this, it's no good, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, what does that mean in the real life? It's cost savings over time. You can have contracts that are dependent on this uptime. And or also you can lose sales, you can lose efficiency within a company because this uptime time is there. So, but this is what the IT should focus. Yes, they need to get this right, but they need to focus on why they do it. So the why has to stay there all the time and cost savings is the business why of the uptime. uptime. So the second one, availability, scalability. So what does that mean is if you have a product, it's on the cloud or whatever you have, how you can scale up. This is an IT metric. Okay. If you have something on Amazon or Microsoft Azure where you have a, 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 a VPC, like a virtual uh, private computer that can expand to multiple, like two, four, eight, 16 to scale up with the demand. This is great. This is, this is something interesting, but you need to make sure that all these things, those things that are available, what's the goal of that? Why you're doing it in IT? Why you need to get this? It's for revenue growth, just to name this one. But that's, that's the link. You should focus on that. Why? That can have an impact by knowing that you're focusing on this as an IT person, CIO, virtual CIO, or director of IT, or anybody in the team. It's because you need to get this to that level, but that thing will help you to define 
how much availability do I need? How much scalability do I need? And what is the budget to achieve that? And what do we do in certain cases? So all these things should be considered and they can only be considered if you are focusing uh, on the business outcomes. So the third example about performance, okay, my website performs very well. My tool being installed on the cloud or on the server are very performant. What does that mean, that performance? Oh, it goes fast. It's 0.3 seconds to load the page and all these things. Okay, well, great, but what is 0.3 seconds versus five versus two? And so what's the meaning of this? So the real meaning is you improve one of them, can have others, but one in my example, improved customer satisfaction, customer experience overall, because they go on your website and if your website offers services, the services and the pages will load faster, the sequence is better, everything is better. So that's very performant, but the outcome is improved customer experience satisfaction, and that's great, this is a good thing. But if it only performs on certain places where the customer doesn't go, what's the point for the business? But it's only for vendors or for other people that are already partners. I'm not saying that you should not consider them, but I mean the business will benefit a lot by improving the customer experience by performance. But IT should focus on that first to get there. And my fourth example is not as obvious as maybe the other three, but having a great security on example, on your SaaS or on your product or everything will increase efficiency overall because if you have issues with security on your platform or on your ecosystem that you offer to your people or whatever setup you have, even if you're not there in terms of software, that's great. But security can create so many headaches, so many problems, so many things that are no good that it's going to uh, decrease the efficiency overall, decrease the customer experience, decrease the employee experience as well. So you have to be careful about uh, not focusing. So I get think focusing on security, but you should focus on increasing efficiency overall. So you don't do that just to protect or even create silos. You do that to make sure that everything is going to be efficient, easy to use for everybody, but safe at the same time. So in summary, I'm not saying that IT should not focus on these metrics. I think that these metrics are a way to get to the business outcomes and they should focus on those business outcomes while, while they are defining those metrics. So focus on that, define your metrics to get there and you can focus on your metrics and keep it a, a very good eye on the business outcomes. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe below and set up the notifications. I'm on a mission to help entrepreneurs to be successful in their transformation. Stay tuned for more videos and don't forget to comment below with your ideas or any topics you'd like me to discuss for you.